At the latest PIC conference called How to Retire Wealthy Using Real Estate Investments, Crew TV asked Robert G. Allen, Sunil Tulsiani, Bogdan Marzuski, Cora Cristobal, Terry Stallwood, Amit Ambagankar, Brian Dion, Taylor Fair, Robert Elder, as well as Paul LaJoy, Nam Ratna, and Saran Ratna to give their expert advice on a variety of pressing real estate topics. The best way to become financially free for the ordinary person is real estate, without a doubt. It's the easiest thing for a person to get started in, and of course, according to my book, how to buy real estate with little or no money down, most people have at least nothing to start with. <laughs> if a person's intimidated by real estate, then I would probably say then go back to your job and, and have a poor life. You know, if fear is stopping you, then fear is a very, very expensive thought. It's, ste it's stealing your dream. And if you let fear steal your dream, then, and many do, they live their entire lives in, 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 in shrouded in fear. You just have to make a decision. Do I want to live the life of my dreams or don't I? And if you do want to live the life of your dreams, it's going to require risk. It's going to require being a different kind of thinker. And seven out of seven people in, you see walking around, you have six employees and one entrepreneur. And if you want to be really wealthy, you have to be that entrepreneur or you have to think like that entrepreneur. And if you want to be not wealthy, then have a job for 50 years and, and, and die broke. The best way to become financially free in 2018 and beyond is without a doubt is to invest in positive cash flowing properties. That means you buy properties, it doesn't matter where you buy it, whether it's GTA, extended GTA or across Canada. The only best way to become financially free is to only invest in real estate that give you cash flow every month in your pocket. You raise money for real estate by finding JV partners. There are people who want to put their money into the deal, but they don't want necessarily be looking for the deal or having anything to do with this particular deal. So you present what is available and the smart people who have a lot of money always can recognize whether the deal is good or not, and they will do it with you. I would advise investors not to speculate or to buy properties just for appreciation. I would advise investors to buy cash-flowing properties. So it doesn't matter where the market goes, up or down. If you have cash-flowing properties, they are your cash cow, meaning to say you have an assured income come what may, regardless of any market situation. Uh, you want to lower the risk by doing your due diligence. Uh, look into as much as you possibly can whenever I buy a property. I actually know more about the property than the owner does. So you got to just do your due diligence, check everything out, and totally make sure you know what you're buying before you buy it. So to lower the risk of real estate, I always do huge due diligence. Due diligence is one of the most important parameters that I use when I'm investing in, in real estate. So there are lots of factors to be looked at. For example, not just the property itself, but a lot of things that go around the property that you should be aware of. For example, what's the area like? What's the area doing in the past five years? Has the trend been on the upside or has it been on the downside? It's not just the price of the property, that's just one factor. So how important is it to be a part of a high-end mastermind and where do you find one? Again, this is like a, a networking event on steroids, we'll say that. So a mastermind is when um, a group of people, let's, let's think about it as uh, like a hockey team, okay? So everyone on the hockey team is a part of the hockey team and you know, you talk hockey, you, you play hockey, you practice hockey together and there's a very high energy of hockey, you know? A lot of hockey going on, so everyone on that team uh, different things, different ideas come out. You know, you're more likely to come up with a really, really good play to score a goal in the locker room with your hockey team than you are to sit around the family dinner table, right? So a high-end mastermind is just that real estate people getting together and kind of just networking but hanging out. Maybe it's over a couple meals during the day. You're spending the whole day together and you're strategizing 
on ways to become successful together. Um, so I run high-end masterminds myself, so I might be a little bit biased, but I can say what I've experienced, because one, one of the biggest challenges that I had when I was starting off is making those kind of connections with people who are real estate investors, uh, people who are uh, bird dogs and you know di different people, but especially people with money. Because I'm nobody, I have no money, I don't know anybody, how am I going to make that connection? And what I've seen is that these masterminds is that people are connecting at, at a higher level, especially a high-end mastermind where you're in a nice setting, you're eating together, you're drinking together, you're having a good time and you're learning from each other. People coming in new immediately get that credibility and that connection and that, uh, that, that network that they need to, to get started. It, things can just explode from there. Well, I like the late Zig Ziglar's quote on money, which is, money isn't all that important, it's just the next most important thing after oxygen. It is possible to have a happy and, and successful life without money, I suppose, but why would you want that? Everything in life is easier, and in my opinion, better if you have some money. If you're gonna have problems, it's much easier to solve if you have some cash flow, and, and having the cash on hand eases a lot of stress. If you're having a successful time and you're in the absence of problems, having money allows you to have a lot more freedom. And I guess that's really the bottom line. Money equals freedom. Well, money is a tool, right? And it's an exchange for two things, right? And what, what right now in the world that we live in, money is what we use, right? And that's the exchange that we use. And it's, go, it's going to give you the freedom of choice, right? I want to be... Uh, I want to have the abundance uh, mindset where I can go and travel, I can go take a year off, um, I can do whatever I want. If my family member is sick, I can take time off and I can spend that time with them, right? You know, money doesn't solve a lot, uh, everything, but it solves a hell of a lot of problems and it makes a lot of things easier. So having an abundance of that gives you the freedom of choice, um, freedom to do what you need to do when you want with your family and your friends. How do you raise money for real estate? It's a great question. There's, uh, um a variety of ways, but we trying to th stick to a, a system pretty much, right? The first thing is you have to have a deal. As a professional active investor, the services that you provide is acquiring that discounted property or that deal and the ability to put your network together and a team to manage it. So if you have systems and understand how to acquire a deal and all that, then the next step is to continuously network. Continuously network and build a list of people and understand how to network. So you need to qualify people, find out, hey, are they an active investor like you or they are a passive investor that wants to invest with you. Once you start collecting names, then you must have a credibility packet that you can present to these potential investors. And the other thing is you need to have some core values that your company stands on because relationships, building true, genuine relationships at the end of the day with your investors and other clients is most important. So you need to illustrate to your potential investors that you're genuine, that you're real. And then on top of that, connecting with mentors that have a solid track record that you can say that you're working one-on-one -on -one with them and these guys have a solid track record. All you gotta do is just present the knowledge that you have and people buy it. There's always money. Okay? They can't put it on the bank. in the bank, they, how much are getting from the bank? The interest rates are very low. You show them here, you can get 10 to 15%. And then you have asset. This asset is appreciating in value. Okay? The asset is appreciating in value. We got nothing to lose. Absolutely nothing to lose. So if you, if you, if you present that to people, you can always do deals without any money out of your pocket. Zero out of your pocket. So top three businesses that are expected to make a lot of money in, 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 in 2018 and beyond. First is real estate. No, def, no questions about that. The real estate continues to be the best vehicle to become wealthy. Now, the question is, where is the real estate going and all that kind of stuff. Don't just buy real estate for appreciation, buy it for cash flow. So that's one thing. Second thing is public speaking. If you like to do public speaking and you like to train people, you want to spread what you have here to the world, public speaking and becoming a trainer is one of the best things that you can do in 2018. And the third one, is a multi-billion dollar industry that has been exploding for the last several years. I mean, this is something that we never saw in the past, and that is coaching and mentoring business. Coaching and mentoring in the past meant you're a movie star, you're an athlete, 
uh, you're, you're somebody, uh, a sports star or something like that, not for regular people. But what has happened in the last eight to 10 years is because regular people are saying, wait a minute, I need mentoring, I need coaching for my business, for my health, uh, to lose weight, uh, to personal growth, I need somebody to keep me accountable to do that. So mentoring and coaching, consulting, is the fastest growing business and you can start that now. Like you don't need to wait tomorrow. You can get a business card and write your name and say you're a coach. And you do not need to have, uh, for example, one, one of the things people ask me is, oh, wait a minute, don't I have to become wealthy, rich before I can start teaching people? And my answer to that is there's a difference between a coach and a mentor. Coach is somebody who can teach you but hasn't done it. Mentor is somebody who has done it and he can teach you. So co you, can, you can be a coach to start off. Now, everyone who is 30, 35, 40 years old, they have some sort of life experiences. So they can actually, you can, if somebody says to you, okay, I wanna lose 20 pounds, you can, even though you haven't lost the 20 pounds, you can help people. Now, does it help for you to lose 20 pounds and look great and teach? Of course it does. But you can start coaching tomorrow and it's the fastest growing business on the planet. I made my, my first fortune in real estate. Then I started teaching people how to do what I did. I did it naturally, it just kind of grew into a huge business. But I learned a real secret from that process that teaching someone how to do what you've done is many, many, many times more profitable than actually doing it or even continuing to do it. Uh, my students have done, have made billions of dollars in profits. My students are billions. So I want them to be the ones that buy the real estate now. Having a mentor is the safest and the easiest way to assure your success. Whether it is going to be a mentorship in business, in real estate investing, in health, in any area of your life, having a mentor who has done exactly what you want to do. Because you don't have to do a trial and error. When you have a mentor, it's the most guaranteed way to just accomplish what you want to accomplish. It's only important to have a mentor if you want to avoid problems and really accelerate your growth. If you're willing to learn everything the hard way and have it take twice or three times as long, then you don't need a mentor at all. The purpose of a mentor or a coach is to really shorten the learning curve. So if you're interested in shortening the learning curve, um, I've acquired quite a few properties and have a really good portfolio, and it's taken me well over 30 years to get there. If I'd had a coach and a mentor, I could have easily done that in half the time and probably with a lot less headaches. Uh, it's very important to have a mentor. I started off when I started years ago without a mentor, and I've lost a million dollars probably trying to figure it out myself, and i thinking I know shortcuts, and it doesn't work. Do, use the proven system, follow somebody that is doing what you want to do yourself. Having a mentor is one of the most powerful strategy that you can use because I myself have been involved in seven businesses and I did all those businesses with very, very limited success. And when I went through that whole process, I said, what's going wrong? I mean, I am not figuring out the real strategy or the technique to be successful, right? And what I was missing is a huge component, which was having a powerful mentor or a coach. And once I got that, once I understood it, they guided me through the exact processes that I need to know. And that's what I do for clients now. I help them go through that step-by-step -step process so that they get the success that they're looking for in their business. If you look at the success of in any discipline, you always find that there is a person behind the scene, someone who is handing the hand, the mentor or coach, which is necessary in the success. Because this person shows you the steps. It tells you what to do exactly and how to create a plan that works from start to the end. Without that, you can spend years on your own and you can accomplish something, but without mentor, you will not be successful. I mentor people because I want people to come up to my level with me. Uh, one of the other things I get out of mentorship is having a, it's having a group of people to work with instead of just me by myself. We've always understood that having a mentor is extremely important. So 
Within, we've only been doing it for five years and I quit my day job within my first three years of business. So we figured it out within the first year, but we had a lot of help with our mentors and stuff like that. So the number one thing that I did when I got into real estate, my father was in real estate and you know I learned a lot from some of the mistakes that he did because he didn't get educated, right? So number one, get educated, right? Find a mentor, find someone that's doing this um, and, they, and learn from them, right? We're not reinventing the wheel. I didn't reinvent this. I didn't start um, you know, flipping properties and buying, uh, buying holds. Um, learn from someone who's been doing it successfully and, and you know, accelerate your growth curve. It's very important if, if, it's, if it's what you want, if, if, you, if you want success at a certain level and there's people out there doing what you want to do, whether it is real estate, whether it is surfing, whether it's playing in a rock and roll band, or whether it's knitting scarves, I don't know what it is. If there's something you want to do and someone else is doing it, find that person that's doing it well, ask them questions, make sure they're actually doing it because there's a difference between a coach and a mentor. A coach gives you guidance and a mentor is actually successful at it and they help you get to your goals. Well, how do you, how do you learn how to drive a car? You find somebody who knows how to drive. Usually they're a hired person that you pay and you sit right in the car with them and you're scared out of your mind and you have all these knobs and, and dials and you buttons and things to push and, and uh, they sit right there and they watch you. So obviously you're not going to be a successful investor driving this car by yourself. <clears throat> you need to apprentice with somebody or a mentor with somebody. Can you do it uh, online? Yes, it's, it's better if they're, they're physically in your city and you can meet with them. Yes, that's the best. I am where I'm at because of mentors.